How's it going guys? My name is Chris and welcome back to another health empowerment video. This video is focused on preventing superbugs or antibiotic resistant organisms. Maybe you've heard of MRSA for instance and we're going to talk a little bit about that today and some things that you personally can do to help stop the spread of them. My mission with this channel is to help people thrive despite any health circumstances and preventing chronic diseases and morbidity or mortality is a big part of that. So if that's something that sounds interesting to you, consider subscribing. I don't usually do a lot of news like content, but I feel like giving you a case example of this is important to see the severity of these situations. I mean, perhaps you've had a friend that's, that's had MRSA or you yourself have had MRSA or some other type of antibiotic resistant organism and it can be extremely dangerous and even fatal at times. So perhaps you heard about this woman back in August of 2016 that was admitted to a hospital and she died despite being treated with multiple different antibiotics. The, re the organism that she was infected with turned out to be resistant to 26 different antibiotics. And the reality is that we are running out of antibiotics to keep up with the way that these bacteria and different organisms are becoming resistant to them at an alarming rate. And there's a lot of reasons for this. And, and if you stick with me, you'll see the way that we can approach this to at least slow this down and potentially stop from creating more of these super bugs because it's a big issue for our health. It's a serious issue for our safety and we don't want to end up in a doomsday type scenario. I know I'm sounding like a, a whistleblower here and that's that's not my intention, but it is a it is a reality and people die. A lot of people die every year in the hospitals uh, or, or elsewhere because of antibiotic resistant organisms such as MRSA or, or other types of re resistant organisms. Surprisingly, a lot of organisms we consider to be hospital acquired infections originally started in a confined animal feeding operation. So I think that's a big way that you can make a difference in stopping the spread of superbugs by voting with your dollar. That's not to say that these don't start in hospitals because there's certainly evidence of that too. We know that when people are administered large doses of antibiotics and an infection isn't completely killed off, that it's that old saying of what doesn't kill you only makes you stronger. And that's true if you're prescribed an antibiotic for home too. Now I'm not I'm not a fan of antibiotics a lot of time because they're over prescribed but there are times where they're certainly necessary so if you're prescribed an antibiotic you really have to finish the entire antibiotic as prescribed because if you don't and the infection isn't completely killed off then it's going to find ways to adapt through various different mechanisms that are well beyond my understanding and is way beyond the scope of this channel anyways. But what we do know is that if you are not killing off the infection entirely, it's going to find a way to become more resistant to antibiotics. The unfortunate reality of going into a doctor's office with symptoms that may resemble a cold is there are a lot of cases where an antibiotic will be prescribed even when we're not sure if it's bacterial and even if we're not sure if one's really necessary because a lot of physicians just don't have the time or don't want to, for whatever reason, culture the patient because it's cost or things like that. So we don't really know sometimes what is the underlying cause of your infection. So what happens with that is Again, we're administering more antibiotics, we're wiping out bacteria in the gut that might be helpful, and that's working against us in the long run. So be sure that you ask critical questions and try and see if you can figure out if they understand why they're prescribing you this antibiotic. And be sure that it's, they have good reason why they want to prescribe this antibiotic for you. Another quick hospital related tip is make sure that if, if you're going to visit somebody and they have those precautions posted outside their room, that you're taking those precautions because you don't want to take that infection with you. You don't want to bring that further out into the world and then spread it even further. So make sure that you're taking the right precautions when you go in to visit somebody in the hospital. Lastly, there's the controversial topic of antibacterial soaps and whether or not you should use them or you should just use regular soap. Now the reality is if you use a regular soap, you lather well and you truly scrub your hands 
for 20 seconds at least, 20 to 30 seconds, that's longer than you think it is if you sit down and you really count it out, then there's very little chance that you're going to have any organisms surviving on you because it's the friction that's going to get most of that off. So, are we contributing to stronger bacteria and organisms by using these agents such as antibacterial soap? I don't know the answer to that for sure. I know that I can get my hands really clean through, I know that I can get my hands really clean through thorough scrubbing or by using a hand sanitizer which will certainly kill everything on there. So those are some ways that you can prevent the spread of superbugs. I'm going to do a video relatively soon, maybe next week or within the next couple weeks too that I think you might be interested in if you like this video uh, that is going to be focused on can probiotics be used to combat superbugs such as this. So be sure to keep checking back on the channel for that. If you found this kind of thing helpful, these are the kind of videos that I do. Consider subscribing. If you're watching this on YouTube, hit that little bell so you never miss another video. And I look forward to seeing you next time, guys.